1919, British physicist Sir Arthur Eddington traveled to the tiny island of Principe off the west coast of Africa. He went there because that was going to be the prime viewing spot for a total solar eclipse. And he wanted to test a little theory. It was a theory that came from a paper that was published in 1905, 14 years prior, by some fairly unknown Swiss patent clerk that claimed that extreme gravity, like the kind produced in stars, could actually bend light. So if you were able to look at a star on the other side of the sun, you would be able to see that its position has changed a little bit. Simple, right? Except you might have noticed that the sun can be a little bit bright. But this total solar eclipse gave Eddington six minutes to view the stars on the other side of the sun, and sure enough, they weren't where they were supposed to be. This experiment turned Newtonian physics completely on its head, and it verified the theory of special relativity and turned that unknown patent clerk, Albert Einstein, into a household name. Over the years, one experiment after another has proven Einstein's theory is correct, and just last week, scientists announced the results of an experiment that is being hailed as one of the most significant discoveries of the last 20 years, one that could open up an entirely new field of astronomy. And once again, it has everything to do with gravity. Einstein drops the mic. Mark Lott and Greg Porter and Who's the Daddy 30 and holy crap everybody asked, what's the deal with gravitational waves? So here's the deal with gravitational waves. Yeah, I don't know. I don't, I don't understand it. Hey, thanks for watching. If this is your first time here, I'd love for you to hit subscribe because I come back with, no way, I'm just kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. No, come on, gravitational waves, let's do this. This isn't typically a show that reports all the newest science news, but this is pretty significant, so yeah, we're gonna talk about this. Einstein imagined two black holes spinning around each other and eventually merging into one black hole. And using the equations of special relativity, he theorized that gravity would be so disturbed by such an event that it would explode outward and travel away from it in waves. These waves would travel through space, squeezing and pushing the fabric of space-time at the speed of light and losing energy as they go. The problem is that an event of such magnitude would have to have happened so far away from Earth that by the time it got to Earth, the waves would be so small that they would be practically undetectable. Even Einstein himself thought that this couldn't possibly be tested. But in 1992, scientists from MIT and Caltech got together and designed LIGO, the Laser Interferometer Gravitational Wave Observatory. The idea is actually pretty simple. A laser is fired through a beam splitter, which creates two different lasers that go in 90 degree angles from each other. They bounce off a mirror and come back, where they're eventually recombined. The machine is designed so that when the light is recombined with each other, it's in phase, which means that it cancels each other out and you can't see any light. But a passing gravitational wave would push and pull the space-time between the mirrors just enough to make that light phase shift. They're basically using the waves in the laser beams as tiny marks on a giant ruler that's accurate to one one-thousandth the width of a proton. And it was giant. Each arm of this experiment is two and a half miles long. And there were two of them, one in Louisiana and one in Washington State, so that if both of them lined up, it couldn't possibly be by some kind of local activity or seismic underground vibrations. LIGO went into operation in 2002 and ran for eight years continuously without ever finding any actual observations of gravitational waves. But in 2010, it was shut down and improvements were made to it called Advanced LIGO. This made it four times more powerful than the original LIGO. They cranked it up again in September of 2015, and this time almost immediately, both observatories picked up an out-of-phase signal. The signal is named GW150914, and studies confirm that it came from a merger of two black holes 1.5 billion light years away. One black hole was 36 solar masses, in other words, 36 times the size of our sun. The other one was 29 solar masses, and when they combined, the, the black hole that they formed was 62 solar masses. For those of you paying attention, there's three solar masses missing from that, which means three times the energy of the sun exploded out from this black hole as gravitational waves. And what's really cool is they were able to convert these waves into sound. What you're about to hear is the merging of two black holes from one and a half billion years ago. That is not impressive. But if the Earth had been sitting right next to it, it would have been turned into a cloud of dust. This event is a big deal for a lot of reasons. It's the first time we've ever observed gravitational waves, obviously. It's also the first time we've ever observed the collision of two black holes. And it's the first time we've ever made an astronomical observation with something other than light. And by light, I'm including the entire electromagnetic spectrum. This is such a big deal that the scientists at LIGO took five months to examine the data to make sure that it's correct. This is one of the most scrutinized pieces of scientific data in science history. We now have the ability to use gravity itself to make observations. This gives us a whole new window into the cosmos, giving us a whole new perspective on black holes and the Big Bang and the origin of the universe itself. But LIGO is just the beginning. 
A slew of other gravitational observatories are being built all around the world, including Virgo in Italy, which will multiply our ability to detect these gravitational waves and determine where they came from. And coming soon is the ELISA mission, which is going to take LIGO to the extreme. They're going to launch three satellites between the Earth and the Sun and create two arms a million kilometers long. This instrument will provide a level of sensitivity so amazing, we literally can't even conceive of what we're going to discover with it. We are witnessing the birth of an entirely new branch of astronomy, so if you're wondering what all the nerds are so excited about, there you go. Now before I close, I want to just point out that all of this was just thought up by Albert Einstein over a hundred years ago. A guy who struggled to be taken seriously for years, eventually resorting to working at a patent office, which let's face it, for a PhD is kind of embarrassing. Do you know how hard it is to get a scientific paper published? I mean, even if you're working at a really highly respected university, it's difficult, much less if you're just a little peon patent clerk. The fact that he even tried to get a paper published is pretty remarkable. But he had the balls to not only publish papers, but publish papers that completely upended the established order with radical ideas. Ideas that have completely reshaped our understanding of the universe and continue to surprise us even a hundred years later. Imagine if he hadn't been so bold. The universe would be a really different place. Now, I had to do a whole lot of research for this, so I'm putting the links in the description below. You can go check them out if you want to find out more about this. And what might I have missed? Is there anything that you've heard about this discovery that you think is really cool? Talk about it in the comments. Thanks for watching, you guys. If this is your first time here, I hope I earned a subscription because I come back with stuff just like this every Monday. If you've got a question you'd like answered, check out some of my other videos because I've covered a lot of stuff at this point. And if you don't find your answer there, you can hit me up in the comments below or at Joe Scott Writer on Twitter, and we can get that answer, yo. Now, you guys go out there and have an eye-opening week, and I'll see you right back here next Monday. Thanks. Love you guys. Thank you.